Welcome to the Finding the Magic podcast, where books come alive. I'm Tricia Copeland, a fiction author and host of this show. If you love books, finding great reads, and hearing about the story behind the story directly from the authors, this is the place for you. Whether you like fantasy, science fiction, dystopian, or romance titles, I think you'll find something to love in my playlist. Listen in to discover something magical about a book or two today. Welcome, Jake. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being here. Today we have Jake Lynch. He recently published your first book, right? Yeah, I, I published it in like December of 2023. So like still kind of like six months ago, but like time goes by really fast, you know. It's like, wow, that just happened. And I'm like, oh, it's, it's June already. All right. So I got a little bit of your story, but take us back to the beginning. What made you become an author? Yeah, so my origin story is kind of unique because for there's a lot of background and context to this question. So I grew up as a kid who didn't read that much. And I was not a huge fan of my, you know, like English in high school of like, oh, reading Catcher in the Rye and all these books. I was not a big fan of them. So being an author was, I would say, the last thing I imagined I would become. And so uh Fast forward to my sophomore year in college. I had just finished my first semester and it was a very stressful time. And uh, near the end of the semester, I got this impression to write a book about a janitor because like over the previous summer, I had encountered a janitor on a train and he was a very kind man to me. And so this impression didn't go away. And I think to myself, okay, I need to pray about this because it's not going away. It's not like an anxious idea or anything. So I'm like, okay, I should pray about this. And so I take a quiet time. I pray for like five minutes in silence. And then I open up my Bible and I like I, I read in the book of Isaiah which was kind of unique because uh, if you haven't read the Bible, the book of Isaiah is in the Old Testament. And when I read the Bible, I read chronologically. I was in the New Testament prior. I had actually gotten a second impression to read the book of Isaiah specifically shortly before that. And so I flip open to where I was at in the book of Isaiah. And I'm like, God, do you want me to write a book? I open up Isaiah. And the first thing that I read was Isaiah chapter 30, verse 8, which says, write these words down, write it in a book. And I'm like, okay, you can't get clearer than that. (laughs) All right, God, you want me to write a book? I'm going to write a book now. And after that, I started writing. And here we are five years later. That is really neat. I'm getting chill bumps because obviously you were supposed to write a book. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, I know. I had zero aspirations for becoming an author. And then it's like, all right, you flip open, like you flip open, and like, oh, it says right there, right? This like, do you want me to write a book? Like the coincidence of the question and reading that verse was too much for me to think it's just a coincidence. I'm like, no, this is important. And like that was one of the pivotal moments of my life. And so from then I started writing. So here we are. Okay. And do you enjoy it? I guess you do enjoy it if you finish the book (laughs) well actually over the years I did not actually like when I first started writing I hated it because I looked at it more as a discipline uh like and I was still in college at the time I still had to go do all my classes hang out with friends but I had to write I, I set a time to write for like an hour to two hours a day and that was very hard for me to do that's a lot yeah yeah and like you know, and I had to say no to a lot of things. I'm like, no, like I like I know my friends want to go hang out, but I have to I have to go write this thing. And it was also hard because I had no idea what I was doing. You know, like I had never written a book before. I had no idea how to write a book. And starting from scratch, man, like that's hard. It's very hard. Like for like a full year, I, I made the error of writing the story and editing it at the same time. And you're not in an agreement yeah. you, 
you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm like, it took me a full year to realize that that approach does not work. But so, you know, like the first few years were rough and I did not like it. But then as time went on and my story started to develop more, that's when I became more attached to the characters. And that's when I started to enjoy it more. And now I'm able to enjoy it. That's good. And did you like take any classes or watch videos or do any courses to learn None. how to write, to do plot characters, any of that? None. I, I should have done my homework before I started doing this. That would have saved me a lot of time. I had to learn it all from scratch. Eventually, after a couple of years of writing in circles and not getting anywhere, I, you know, decided to do some homework and read a couple books on how to write a book. So I read Stephen King's memoir on called On Writing. And then another book, I forgot the name of it. It was like how to write a book or something. And it was like, that taught me like, you know, plotters and pantsers, like people who like what your writing style is. The problem was for me, I'm like, I don't know what my writing style <laughs> is. And it was hard because I, I experimented with each method over the years and I'm like, am I more of a plotter or am I more of a pantser? And it took me a long time, but I realized that I'm actually a hybrid. I plot and I pants. So it like I should have done my homework on that. And it would have saved me a lot of time, but I made it eventually. <laughs> so tell me about your characters. Do you have a story with the janitor character? Yeah, so the story evolved a lot. And like the janitor was like the catalyst for getting the story started, but he's actually not the main character. So with my with my book called Broken to Beautiful, it's actually about a girl in high school named Crystal. She's a shy girl and a social loner, so she doesn't she doesn't know how to interact with people. And high school is a very awkward time for people. And so she's a girl who doesn't know how to make friends or to have fun. And she like struggles with, you know, like some very dark issues that a lot of people deal with these days, like having suicidal thoughts and depression, but she is able to like throughout the story, she finds God. And because of that, she starts to love on people because God loved her. And so when she starts doing that and getting outside of her comfort zone, that's when she really starts to experience the joys of life for the first time and connect with people for the first time. And so I create a lot of different characters throughout the story and like they're all based off certain themes and issues. Like I'll have one character that deals with a lot of grief and then one character that struggles with, you know, like an identity crisis of like, who am I? Another character that relate that struggles with pleasing people, you know, like a lot of things that high schoolers and just people like struggle with when it comes to socializing. So it's a thematic style story but it's still a story. So I like to teach uh, certain messages through the characters in the story. So a lot of my like books and stories that I'm writing and like are based off character development and what the characters go through and how they experience change and grow from those experiences. That's really neat. So how did you pick a teenage girl as your main character? You know, people ask me that question of like, why did you write like your first book about a girl instead of a guy. And honestly, I don't like, it's kind of a vague answer. Like there's like multiple factors, but I also like, it's just, that's just how it developed. And I wanted it to be a story about friendship rather than like a romance, you know? And so I, and like when I was writing the story, it turns out like, I didn't realize it until after that I had written a lot of female characters. There's a lot of female characters in my story. And I'm like, if the main character is a guy and he like, let's say, helps all of these girls with their problems, then it'll kind of seem like it's a romance story. And, and I don't want that. That's not what I was intending with this story. I want it to be more about friendship. So that's one of the reasons why I kept it as a girl. But then, I don't know, there, there's also differences between uh, like, me like male and female in stories to where if it was a girl it would like she would seem more innocent rather than a guy being the main character because she would be dealing with a lot of inward like dark darkness and if it was a guy it would like it gives off a different vibe like there's a psychological thing to it 
but I wanted to, like I wanted a character who was approachable and more innocent and just easy to talk to and not just like a person who carried a lot of darkness within all the time. So yeah, it, it's kind of a vague answer. It's like hard to explain, but not, but also I didn't really think about it until after I wrote it. I'm like, yeah, that's just how it turned out. That's an, do you have sisters or did you like show it to friends and say, is this what the girl would do or? The, the funny part about it is I don't have any sisters. <laughs> I have like I have only brothers like my cousins are all boys and my brothers you know so it's it's kind of funny how that all turned out but I don't know I, I gave it to my mom and she's like yeah you did a good job on it and I'm like okay good there you go <laughs> that's what counts at mom least I checked stamp of approval. <laughs> oh yeah you got to get the mom's stamp of approval so that is great so the name of your story is broken to beautiful Yes. Book, it's broken and beautiful and it's about crystal who's a teenager in high school and just are do you tell it over like a certain period of time or how does that develop for her i would say it develops in like the middle to later years of high school like the story starts off already settled into high school like no it's not the first day of school or anything so it, it starts almost in the middle of the story and I leave a lot of area open for background to like go back into the earlier days to explain, you know, everything about the characters in the story and how they grew up and turned out the way they did. So the story starts off in the middle of the high school days. And, you know, like I, I like doing that. I, I like starting off in like in the problem and then developing the story after the problem. Like, okay this thing happened like this very dark event happened and then and then the story grows from that and you see what comes afterwards it's like a it's almost like going through the darkest moment in your life but then you experience the journey and transformation after that and the growth of coming back to the world and finding the joy again so I, the, the story starts off kind of dark and I do warn that in the beginning. Uh, but once you get past the first couple of chapters, that's when the story really expands and it takes on a whole new world, basically. And did you write it from Crystal's point of view or is this third person? It's third person. And like it follows Crystal, but there's multiple characters as well. So I wrote the story in like third person, mostly omniscient kind of and but there's multiple characters in it so it like it goes into different characters interactions and their thought process as they interact with crystal as the main character so yeah right so you can get all those different viewpoints and get other characters experiences as well exactly exactly <laughs> and that's the fun part too because i loved developing different characters who were very like Characters who are very different from Crystal, who, like the main character, like watching a shy, introverted girl interact with the with an extroverted person who is like the life of the party and just seeing how that, you know, plays out. But then also watching how two different personalities become friends in different scenarios. I love seeing that happen. So like by the end of this, like, you watch a community develop throughout the story and it's it's lovely it's wonderful everyone's different and you'll find a certain a sense of relatability to a lot of the characters so i love how i created that neat did you put your own personality in there are you one of the characters <laughs> i mean technically yes like some of the characters are based off some problems that i've gone through I mean, if I had to like give away a spoiler, I would say I'm the most like crystal. She like she's like 98% me, but not a hundred percent me, just because she grew up in different circumstances than I did. But I didn't try to make anything new when I was creating Crystal and her personality. I'm like, no, I'm just gonna write what I know because this is my first book and I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna write what I know. Fun, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm assuming after you went through this four or five years of figuring out how to write a book, so did you have it edited and go through that process too? 
over and over again. Like I went like I had to discover how to make official drafts, you know, like just saying like this is the story rather than rewriting it over and over again. I would take a whole draft and it would be a couple hundred pages. And I'm like, nope, I'm going to change the whole story. I'm just going to throw it out just like that. And then I'll just rewrite the whole thing over again. And that's why it would take me another year or two. So I eventually, I had to hire a couple editors too. I hired one gal through Upwork and then she had to uh, back out of the agreement because she got diagnosed with a health problem. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. And then I hired another editor and she actually didn't do a good job. And, and I like, so I had to read it a lot. I had to read my own story like at least five times just to check for edits and then i also hired a proofreader like i was trying to get this thing perfect man and of course i had to write a very long book like the book on paperback is like 650 pages long wow i know that's why that's why it took me five years i can't (laughs) i wasn't writing just a short 100 page or 200 page novel i'm like no i had to go and write a book that had 242,000 words in it. Wow. Yeah, that is definitely an undertaking. So yeah, when I wrote my first book, my editor like sent it back and said, okay, take two thirds of this out. because I wrote it like I was seeing a movie in my head. So it was mostly like almost like a screenplay. Like it had all dialogue. And she said, you can't have all dialogue. No. Like I'd written like 190,000 words. She was like, this needs to be 90,000 words. <laughs> oh, shit. yeah. I told it you was, to take out 100,000 words. Yeah, I took out. Yeah, I took out so much. It was, yeah, it was great. Oh my so, gosh. I can feel the pain. Yes. <laughs> wow. That's, that's incredible. They didn't tell me that. They just read it and said, nope, it's good. And I'm like, okay, great. You must have had the right mix then. I don't know about that. I don't know. I, it, there's pros and cons to it, but uh, eventually it turned out great. So as great as I could make it. That's awesome. Congratulations. So Thank where you. do you go from here? Yeah. So right now I'm uh, still marketing it. I've had it out for six to seven months. I also had my audiobook get created. So that came out in May. So now this book is finally an audiobook. It's out on Audible. You can listen to it there, Broken to Beautiful. And, you know, I'm, still trying to promote it. I'm still learning how to be a self-published author essentially and market the book and get the word out and connect with people. So now that's a new part of the journey that I never expected I would be taking on. So that's what I'm currently doing right now is a lot of marketing and social media. So yay, I post my life on social media. I'm an introvert. I don't like doing that. Um, No, I love reading YA and I love audiobooks. So I will definitely pick it up. So Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, get ready. Get ready to cry, Trisha. <laughs> oh no, that's bad because I cry. I cry at everything. My kids are like, "Mom, stop, just stop." Anyway. <laughs> oh, well, you're gonna you're gonna love this story. Then it'll really uh, it's gonna tear your heart out. Oh man. Okay, I have to be in the right mood. Yeah, um, that's right. That's right. So, are you gonna write another book now that you sort of have enjoyed this? at least the end of this process. Yeah. Yeah. So now that I finished writing my first book, I'm like, well, now I know how to write another one. So I might as well go write another one. So now I'm working on trying to get a new series started, actually. So my first book is more of a one-off and I have a second book that I have already written. I'm just still working on getting the front cover for that made. And that'll be the start of an action adventure series, actually. So I plan to write a lot of books in that theme in the future. And I'm working on that right now and the one after that. So I'm staying busy, Trisha. I'm not going to lie. That sounds like a lot. And what is, you said it's action adventure. Can you tell us any more about that? So we- yeah. Yeah. Oh, so okay. the second book is called The Lost Saint, like Chronicles of the Lost Saint. And it's about a very pious and religious soldier who lives in a post-nuclear world war, basically. And so, like, everything's been destroyed, but it's kind of like an age of renewal to where every, it's like a, a modern medieval ages, actually. So, like, bullets are rare and, like, modern technology is few. And so, and yet, the, but there's still modern technology. And so he's a soldier who has 
lost everything and has to find a new purpose in this world where everything that he knew is different. And so he encounters new cities, new communities of people, and has to try and figure out what his calling is in this new world after he's been at war for so long. So that's the start of it. That sounds neat. It sounds very dystopian. Um, I'm I'm picturing Waterworld and The Road. I don't know if you've read The Road or not, but I have not read The Road. It like it certainly blends certain themes. It's like a little dystopian for sure, but it's not like totally, but it is. So it's kind of like it's kind of like the Book of Eli. If you ever saw that movie, I don't know okay. if you saw that movie. I haven't seen it. I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of like that. I need to read more dystopian novels. But yeah. Well, I never read what I'm writing. So I write in several different genres. But if I, so if I'm writing in fantasy, I don't read fantasy because I'm scared that whatever right. ideas are in the book are going to get transferred into my new story. So oh, well, no, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe it's different for everybody, but yeah. Maybe. I mean, it certainly helps me learn more about the genre that I right. plan to write right. in. Like, oh, you can do that? Okay, I can I can do that too. I don't know. To me, yeah, I see I see the benefits though too. Yeah. 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 Good. And at what age is your character in the new uh, book? In the new book, I, I don't really give his age. I kind of keep him as like mysterious a little bit. Like he's a like he, you know, like I don't know, like a middle-aged to younger type man. He's not like He's not a guy in his 20s. He's like some guy in his maybe his 30s to 40s. But I keep his age a mystery just because I don't want to deal with plot on that one and expand the story. Right, right. Neat. Fun. Yeah. Well, tell us where, I mean, you've said a little bit about where we can find you, but tell us where we can find you in all the major channels. All the major channels, <laughs> yes. You can find me on my website at authorjakelynch.com. That's Lynch, L-Y-N-C-H. Um, and you can find me at my Instagram, which is author Jake Lynch. <laughs> and that's usually where you can find me and get in touch with me. So if you have any questions, you can go there. My book, Broken to Beautiful, is on Amazon. So just look for the picture of the butterfly with broken glass on it. And like that's where you'll find it. And it's also on Audible. So those are the two main areas that you can find me. Okay. And for my last question, this is my favorite question to ask authors. What do you want? Okay, so maybe we'll just talk about Broken Beautiful since that's the one that's out. Okay. Um, what do you want readers to come away from after reading your book? Um, whether it's a thought, a feeling, or what is kind of your main goal? My main goal would be for people to think differently about how they look at the world and what I what I mean by that is I want people who I want people to look up from their current problems and to look around at the people who are next to them and to think, is everyone around me actually doing OK? And to reach out to people, even if it's uncomfortable, I want people to look up from their phones and to see the person who's crying right next to them and to put a hand on their shoulder and help them out. I want people to think differently about what they think about life and how they look at the world and to know that there is hope for us, that even though this world can be dark and hard, there is hope, there is love, there is a reason to breathe. And that's what I want people to take away from this. I want them to be changed and to think, oh, it's not all about me. I need to start looking at the people around me and caring for them because we're all in this together. That's really neat. That's really poignant and strong. I know for me, I experienced um, some mental health problems. I was anorexic as a young adult. And oh. when you get in that space, you're just very closed off. Like you're only focused on, you know, surviving to the next day, the next hour, like the depression. And you just get very closed and very like, like you're just shut everything else out. And I remember yeah being out of that and feeling like in while I was in it I felt like I couldn't talk to anyone else or I couldn't share what I was going through and then but coming out of that and really having believing and having people tell me 
you need to share what's going on with you with other person because that's how people relate. And yeah. if if you're not sharing, they're not going to share either, right? So yeah. being willing to be vulnerable helps other people, which is what I I didn't get or didn't see. And like just allowing yourself to be human yeah. um, in those times. And yeah, so made so many more connections after I was able to kind of like open up a little bit and realize that and let people help me, right? And by letting people help me, part of that was helping them as well. Um, so yeah, so that's, yeah, I think that's really poignant wow. especially for that age group. Um, and then like, it sounds like your next books are a little bit of soul searching as well. So going into that, yeah, that feeling or that theme of hope. Yeah, I like having themes of hope. Like my stories can be a little dark, but there is a hopeful theme to all of them. And that's what I plan to do. That's what I plan to write. So, yeah. Neat, fun. Well, thank you so much for being here, Jake. Thanks Jake, for having Lynn, me. Author, and we will, um, yeah, hopefully get you back on to hear about your next book release. Can't wait. Yeah, this will be great. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Finding the Magic podcast. I'm your host, author and podcaster, Trisha Copeland, and I love getting behind the scenes. If you like the podcast, make sure to subscribe and stop in each week, discover new authors and books. Thanks for listening. And until next time, keep finding the magic.